The movie I'll introduce to you today tells a story about a retired assassin being forced to go back to the criminal path. But because he had violated the rules, he got hunted down by the whole assassin organization. John Wick 3. Hi, everyone, this is Harry talking about movies. In the first two films, because of his dog being killed brutally, John Wick had slaughtered the whole organization. He wanted to retire, but his boss didn't let him go easily. His own house was blown up after a night. Then he killed his boss at a hotel. It was against the rules of the underworld. So he became the wanted. He only had one hour to escape. The organization issued a wanted warrant. There were only 30 minutes left. John and his dog were running wildly in the rain. He hailed a cab to go to the New York Public Library. Unfortunately, they were caught in a traffic jam. John had to change his plan. He gave the driver a gold coin and told him to take his dog to the hotel and entrust to the front desk for help. He went to the library on foot, he found the book he used to hide here. There were a badge and a cross inside. There was also a picture of him and his deceased wife. He only had one hour to escape. Now, there were only ten minutes left. There were always some fools that were not afraid of death. An assassin tried to kill John. Though John carried no weapon with him, he could still beat him on the spot. But it was hard to get no hurt at all. John was accidentally stabbed in the shoulder by the assassin. In a few minutes, he found a doctor who was active in the underworld. Fortunately, the doctor did not refuse John. Finally, the wound was sewn up. To convince John he brought no harm, the doctor proposed John shot him twice. To draw a clear line with the doctor, John shot him once. At that time, people were shouting and fighting outside. John had to run away to hide. Facing with the new assassins, John used his unique skills on the spot. With the knives that he had carried with him, he turned several people into hedgehogs. John finally cut those people off. But at that time, he was run over. He had to change his plan again, hiding in the nearby horse shed. To say he was the top assassin wasn't exaggerating. Whatever in his hand could turn into weapons to kill people. Even a tab on the horse killed several people. Then John stole a horse and ran away. A group of riders chased after him. John knocked him out one by one. At that time, the reward for John's head had increased to $15 million. Though John was the top assassin, there were so many people wanting to kill him. He couldn't defeat them all. So he came to the Ruska Roma's base. But this organization was also restricted by the high table. John held the cross in his hand. The boss of the base must fulfill John's request. John asked the boss to send him to Casablanca. The boss agreed with John. His cross might be kept by the organization. With the help of the boss, John made it to Casablanca. When he arrived, John went straight to the Continental Hotel. According to the high table, John Wick could no longer have access to this hotel. But John had carried with him the badge he found in the library. The manager's fingerprint was imprinted on it. In the second film of the franchise, we talked about the bearer of this badge. You could order the person who left the fingerprint on it to do anything. If the person you order doesn't finish your request, they will break the rules the high table has issued. They will be sentenced to death. John Wick successfully entered the Continental Hotel with his badge. Winston was also found in the door. This woman was one of the judges at the high table because after John killed his boss at Continental Hotel, Winston didn't kill him and gave him one hour to escape, he had violated the rules set by the high table. The adjudicator required him in seven days, he had to finish all affairs of Continental Hotel, or else he would be taken down from his position as Continental Hotel's manager. The adjudicator punished Director, who helped John escape. Because Director was pushed against the wall, as well as she admitted her mistake with a good attitude, the adjudicator punished her lightly. But Bowery King wasn't as lucky. The gun that John used to kill his boss was taken from Bowery King. Bowery was also an iron head. He didn't think he was under the rules of the high table. He refused the adjudication's request. It made the adjudicator feel that the dignity of the high table was challenged. You gave John chapter 7 bullets, now I give you 7 knives to make you abdicate. John met Sophia, his former friend. At John's request, Sophia was going to take him to her boss, the insignia and golden coin maker, to ask him to show John a clear way of how to meet the elder of the high table to find a way out for himself. The maker told him that if he wanted to meet the elder, he should go to the desert, looking at the brightest star above him, following it until he died. So he could see the elder. But he emphasized that everything was unsure. It was all up to his luck. After talking to John, he turned around and caressed Sophia's dog. He wondered if she could give it to him. But he had forgotten that John had slaughtered his whole organization. Sophia refused him on the spot. The maker was also a rockhead. He drew the gun and shot the dog. Even though the dog was wearing a bulletproof vest, Sophia didn't care. Anyone shot her dog, she would kill them. She pulled out her gun and shot the maker. Sophia was as strong as a lion. Her two dogs were also not vegetarian. They rushed up and bit the maker. Though they didn't kill him, the rest of his life had depended on a wheelchair. The gunfire alerted the guards here. John and Sophia were soon surrounded. The two led two dogs opening a bloody way out of the headquarter and drove away without any scratches. Sophia sent John to the edge of the desert and said goodbye to him. John walked through the desert day and night until he was too exhausted and fell in the desert. An old man on a camel picked him up. This was the territory of the elder. The elder said that he could give John a way out. 
but from now on, he would be a servant under the high table, devoting his life to the high table. On the other hand, the reason why John tried so hard to survive was because he wanted to remember his wife. His wife had passed away, he was the proof of her existence in this world, he wanted to live with the memory of his deceased wife. To show his sincerity, John cut off his ring finger with his wedding ring and gave to ring as a token to the elder. The first task the elder gave him was going to the Continental Hotel to kill Winston. But before Winston was killed, neither the expulsion nor the reward would be revoked. In this path, would John overcome the difficulties? It was still unsure that Winston would be killed or not. John just arrived in New York, he had been chased by a group of Japanese assassins. John didn't want to entangle with them. On the bridge, the Japanese assassins attacked him at one, but they still failed to get rid of him. Fortunately, John had arrived at the Continental Hotel, but Zero didn't want to leave. Now there was only the two of them, his attitude suddenly changed. Though he had been chasing him all the way here, he had been a big fan of John for a while. They hadn't finished yet, John was taken to see Winston. Facing the person who had spared him, also gave him time to escape, how could John turn his hand now? At that time, the adjudicator also came. At first glance, these two didn't mean to follow the rules. The adjudicator turned around and informed the high table to shut down the Continental Hotel immediately. This safe heaven would soon attract a lot of assassins. After that, the high table also sent their assassins to the hotel. Though Winston wasn't skilled in fighting, he had a basement full of weapons. Charon, the lobby manager was also a hidden assassin. The two with guns faced the high table's assassins. There was nothing that couldn't be done with these two. But with these advanced bulletproof armors, guns couldn't get through. John and Charon had to change their weapons. Once again, above the assassins, there were bullets shot. The Continental Hotel was cleared quickly. Only the head assassin was left. This assassin's fighting skills were alright. He had a fight with John in the conference hall. Though his skills were undeniable, he was doomed to die in his hand if he messed with John. After the head assassin was killed, the adjudicator couldn't sit still. So many assassins were killed by John. It was a huge loss. She was sure she would be punished when she came back. Was it worth the loss? Why don't we talk it out, Winston? Winston's request was simple. As long as he didn't abdicate, everything was easy to be put on the table. The adjudicator said as long as Winston killed John, the high table would welcome him back and restore the management right of Continental Hotel. Winston fired his gun at John. John fell from the roof. The adjudicator told her fellow man to go downstairs and check on John's condition. But there was no trace of John in the street. The adjudicator was in a panic. A top assassin like John escaping would cause the underworld big trouble. At that time, John had been pulled back by Bowery King. They were both persecuted by the high table. The deal was quickly set between the two. What was exactly the high table? The film came to an abrupt end. John Wick 3 was released in 2019. The fourth film of the franchise is now in preparation. Watching three films in a row, I found that John Wick had reached the climax of the interpretation of violence aesthetic. John Wick had a tragic life. His wife was dead, almost everything reminding him of his wife had been destroyed. The only belief that supported his life was just to remember his deceased wife. At this time, he had stood on the opposite side of the assassin organization. There was no way out. How would John survive in the next movie? Let us wait for the fourth film. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.